Well, what is the resting membrane potential of a cell? Let's talk about the definition of that. The definition of the resting, right, a membrane of a cell at rest has a potential. What is potential? Potential is like, I think of potential as if you're watching this video right now, you want to become somebody in life, you want to become a doctor. Well, you have the potential to become a doctor. You're not a doctor yet, but you have the ability, the potential to be able to do something. So, resting membrane potential is actually expressed as the measured potential difference across the cell membrane. It's a measured potential difference across a cell membrane. This is often measured in millivolts. Millivolts. Well, this has been calculated already, all right? So I didn't come up with this. This are calculated numbers. Well, let's take a look at a couple of resting membrane potential of some ions. Let's take a look at, we're going to use E as a resting membrane potential. For sodium, sodium has a resting membrane potential of positive 65 millivolts. While calcium has a resting membrane potential of positive 120 millivolts. Potassium has a resting membrane potential of negative 85 millivolts. And the last cation, the last anion we're going to talk about is chloride, which has a resting membrane potential of negative 85 millivolts. Now let's take a look at a cell. A normal cell has potassium, a lot of potassium inside the cell. A lot of potassium inside a normal cell, while there's a lot of sodium outside the cell. A lot of sodium, a lot of potassium inside the cell, and there's a lot of sodium outside the cell. Now, what does these numbers mean? We said a resting member potential is the measure. We measure it, we capture it, right? Imagine if I can capture your brain and say, look, this guy is really smart. He's got a lot of potential. And I put a number on it. And I said, he's got a 100% chance of becoming a doctor because why? He gets 4.0 GPAs. He's very active in his organization. He did really well in his MCAT. He got into medical school. He's going to be a doctor. Now, if I capture that, I say, oh, let's put a number on it. That is the amount of potential that you have to become this. That's the same way I look at this resting member potential. The potential of this ions which is usually measured across a cell membrane well although you can see we're putting like negatives and positives what actually happened is what you look at overall is the absolute value of 65 now if i say positive 65 the absolute resting member potential is 65 millivolts and the inside of the cell is positive. For example, if I said the resting membrane potential of a cell is negative 70 or negative 85, let's speak potassium for example, if I say the negative, uh, the resting membrane potential is negative 85, what I'm actually saying is the cell has a 70 or 85 millivolts of, of a potential difference of a resting membrane potential, but overall the cell has a negative charge and we're going to talk about that in full details now let's take a look at the essay note again now that we're talking about the resting membrane potential for an essay note the cell itself it has an unstable resting membrane potential has a resting membrane potential. But before we move on to that, it's another important uh, topic we need to talk about, which are action potentials, because 
Before I can talk about depolarization and repolarization in the SA node, we have to understand what exactly action potentials are. So we're going to keep this on this side of the board. Let me erase this because we're going to be talking about cardiac action potential. And I'm just going to write on this side of the board because I'm going to need some of these values. Let's put potassium here, which is negative 85 millivolts. Let's put sodium, that is positive 65 millivolts. And let's put calcium which is negative, uh, that's positive 120 millivolts. So, what exactly is an action potential? Well, an action potential is actually has a couple of definitions. We have depolarization, we talk about depolarization of a cell. So let's take a look at a cell. Here's a cell. When we say depolarization of a cell, well depolarization is what makes the membrane potential less negative, which means the cell's interior becomes less negative. Well, the way I look at it is there's positive charges outside of the cell. And inside of the cells are negative charges. Negative. See that? So when we talk about depolarization, depolarization when depolarization happens into the cell the positives are going to go inside inside the cell so let's take this part and take all these positive charges and put them inside the cell well here we go see that when we do that I'm going to cut this when all of a sudden the cell depolarizes and there's more positive ions inside the cell, we call that depolarization. See that? The inside of the cell is now less negative, which means there's more positives inside the cell. That is known as depolarization of a cell. Now, the opposite of that is known as repolarization, and repolarization is now when you take this negative, the, ne the negative charges are actually more on the outside of the cell. If we have more negative charges on the outside of the cell, we said that the cell has repolarized. Repolarization. Another terminology, right? So, talking about depolarization of a cell, it's important that you know that the inward flow of positive charges, like I mentioned initially, is what causes depolarization. And when the out, outward flow of negative charges onto the outside of the cell, that is what we term, term as repolarization of a cell. Now, when the outward current hyperpolarizes, it means there's even more negative charges outside of the cell, longer. That is known as hyper, like too much repolarization. And this will all make sense when we get to the SA node ca uh, cardiac action potential. Now, let's go back and talk about the SA node. Now, the SA node has its own cardiac action potential, which I'm going to draw on the board. And this is what it looks like. If you are to measure how the SA node is depolarizing and repolarizing, 
This is what it looks like. Let's take zero as the baseline here. And then we've got 20, 40, 60, and 80. It's actually all a negative, okay? Because that's down, right? Positive would be going up, zero down would be negative. Now, for an SA node it, that has an unstable resting membrane potential, what that fancy word basically means is, remember when I drew out the cell, I said the cell has ion channels. Now, these ion channels per allow either sodium or potassium to go through them. It depends on the probability of this iron channel and what is permeable to what it allows to go through. So if this is a sodium channel that likes sodium to go through, it's going to allow sodium channels to open and to automatically allow sodium to flow inside of the cell. Now the interesting thing about the SA node is because normally a cell, let's say pick a muscle cell, for a muscle cell to depolarize, it needs an action potential from a, 